What's going on guys? And today we're going to be asking the question of whether or not BCAAs are a scam. What's the difference between BCAAs and whey protein? So without wasting any more time, let's go ahead and get into it. What's going on guys, it's David here. And if you're new to the channel, my name is David and I create content that helps people become better athletes through reviews, vlogs, tips, and all sorts of different content. Excuse my frog voice, I am just getting over a cold, so hopefully that doesn't take away too much from today's content. If you enjoyed today's video, please make sure to hit that like button, as well as the subscribe button if you're looking for more content like this, because that helps me know I'm creating the kind of content that you guys wanna see. A few weeks ago, I had a viewer on one of the previous videos that I created ask a little bit more information on what BCAAs are, when is the best time to use them, and just get a little bit more insight into why anybody would want to use BCAAs. This was a very interesting question because I've known about BCAAs for a very long time. I never really stopped to think about why I actually use them per se, outside of I knew that if I was going to be cutting, that I would, might want to include BCAAs into my training, but I never understood why I would want to include BCAAs during my training seasons when I'm going through uh, a weight loss period. Now, if you are unsure what BCAAs are, BCAAs are uh, part of the nine essential amino acids that your body needs, uh, that your body can't produce outside of getting it in your diet, things that you would eat normally throughout the day. And specifically, branch chain amino acids are leucine, isoleucine, and valine. Now the most important key. When you're living that tour bus life, this is a major key alert. When it comes to understanding what BCAs are and what they do, is that leucine, which is the most notable or prominent amino acid within branch chain amino acids, is what helps to prevent muscle breakdown and it's what helps to promote muscle synthesis. So think muscle building, mass building. When you think or hear about bodybuilders that are trying to build mass, essentially what they're doing is getting a ton of amino acids, mostly that comes from um, leucine. So now why would an individual want to take BCAAs? Why, 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 why? Now, BCAAs would be really useful and really helpful in the event that you're doing, let's say, for example, really long endurance-based workouts. So think about marathons. So think about a marathon row. Think about doing something like MRF. Those times or kinds of workouts, specifically CrossFit related, those would be the times that you would want to implement something like a BCAA because that would then help prevent muscle breakdown and it would help make sure that you keep on the massive muscle that you have because when you do aerobic activities, you're breaking down the muscles over time and so BCAAs are gonna help slow that down because the leucine is going to help with muscle protein synthesis. So given that context of information, is there an optimal form or amount of BCAAs that you should take on a daily basis that would help promote muscle protein synthesis? And the answer to that question is yes. yes! yes! About two and a half to three grams of BCAAs is going to help with muscle protein synthesis. So that ratio uh, that you're gonna wanna look for in regards to products, because a lot of the times you'll find that most uh, BCAA products will have about five milligrams of BCAAs, which is about optimal. Five to six would be about optimal. Um, now you wanna make sure that the ratio between leucine to isoleucine to valine is two to one to one because that's gonna be about the most optimal amount of leucine to isoleucine to valine that you're gonna to wanna to have in your product that's going to actually allow for the most optimal and maximal amount of protein synthesis. Um, there are a lot of products on the market that have different ratios or ratios that seem to quote unquote exceed that amount. And don't be fooled by all of that because that is essentially all just their way of marketing to you to make you think that you're getting a better product. Because when all reality, all you really need is about 2.5 milligrams of leucine uh, in order to promote protein synthesis. So for example, in my last video, I reviewed the ghost supplements BCAAs uh, that I actually really like. It's the Swedish fish flavor, and that has about 6,000 milligrams of 
BCAAs. So within each scoop, you're getting about 3,000 gram, or excuse me, you're getting about three grams of leucine, I believe 1.5 gram of isoleucine and 1.5 gram of valine, which is gonna be about the optimal amount of what you would want in a BCAA supplement. Real quick, as I have you guys here, now that we've gotten this definition of what BCAAs are, when you would want to use them, let me know down in the comments below. Was that uh, informative? Did you find that that made sense? Do you have any more questions about that? Let me know down in the comments below. And after this video is posted, I'll go back and answer your questions. If need be, I'll definitely create another video on that. If BCAAs help with muscle protein synthesis, why would an individual want to take whey protein? Now, whey protein, if you are not aware of what exactly whey protein is, it is a derivative of dairy and it contains a complete uh, assortment of uh, amino acids. So it's going to have all nine amino acids as opposed to a BCAA supplement or BCAA powder that only has the three essential amino acids, leucine, isoleucine, and valine. So if whey protein is a complete protein and it has leucine, isoleucine, and valine, why would an individual want to also take BCAA powders on top of the whey protein. Well, that I believe would really come down to the individual's diet and that plays a big factor into why you would take one supplement or the other or why you would take both. Obviously also factoring if you do have the extra cash, if it would be worthwhile taking BCAAs. So to make things even that much more complicated, one scoop of uh, whey protein is also going to have about 2.5 grams of leucine. Uh, you figure about 10% of that scoop of uh, protein, which has all the nine essential amino acids, is going to be uh, consisted of leucine. So you're gonna get all of the muscle protein synthesis that you need in that one scoop. Gotta eat big to get big, come on. <laughs> Should you buy BCAAs or should you buy whey protein or should you buy both? As I said previously, it really all depends. It depends on what your overall goals are. Are you trying to lose weight or are you trying to build muscle? Also, how much money do you have? Do you have enough uh, discretionary or um, dispensable income that you could spend the extra money on supplements that it really doesn't matter? But I think at the end of the day, if you're trying to build muscle, you're most likely not going to need BCAAs as much as if you were fasting or if you were cutting, if you were trying to lose weight. The reason why I say that is because it all comes down to calories in, versus calories out. If you are eating more than you are expending energy, there's a good chance that you're probably going to be getting enough protein throughout the day that you don't need to really worry about your muscles breaking down. Also add in how much you're actually working out and what kind of training you're doing. But on the other hand, if you are trying to lose weight, if you're cutting, if you're doing things like intermittent fasting, having BCAAs throughout the day as well as during your workout could actually benefit you and help you in the long run in regards to making sure that you're not losing uh, too much uh, muscle mass. I will leave the question in your hands. What are your goals? And that's really going to decide as to whether or not you should buy whey protein, whether or not you should buy BCAAs, or whether or not you should focus on your diet and making sure that you're hitting your macros. Uh, so that way you might be able to save some cash. I hope today's video shed some light on the just confusing battle between BCAAs and whey protein. And hopefully that helped you move more towards the right direction on what decision you should make, on what product you should purchase. So let me know down in the comments below, did you find today's video useful, informational, and helpful? If so, let me know what you learned that you didn't learn. Also, if you didn't like today's video, let me know what you didn't like about it, what you didn't agree with. So either hit that like button if you liked it, hit that dislike button if you didn't like it, 
Also hit that subscribe button to let me know that you enjoyed today's content. And if you're looking for more content like this, stay tuned as next week, we will actually be diving into a totally different topic, still in the same niche, but we're gonna be looking at actually what's the difference between the Nike Metcon 4 and the Nano 8. Uh, next week, we're gonna be diving into that. I'm gonna be testing out the Matt Frazier PE edition Nike Metcon 4s versus the, the new CrossFit Games edition um, Reebok Nano 8s. So that's gonna be a super dope video. So make sure to hit that subscribe button if you wanna find out the details on that. Also follow me on IG if you're looking to connect. I would love to connect with you guys. I'm always posting stuff about what I'm eating, my training for the day. So if you guys want more insight on the day-to-day -day activities that I'm involved with related to CrossFit and weightlifting, a little project that I've been working on for the better part of this last year. But if you're looking for supplements that will be perfect for CrossFit that I've tested, that I've used myself, make sure to check out my shop, my online store, Primed Force. We've got apparel and we also have now supplements, things that products that I have tested that I've reviewed here as well as just other cool dope products from other manufacturers that I think are really providing great and useful tools for you guys that'll help you guys become better athletes. Make sure to check out my channel sponsors. They are the dope, amazing, great people that help make sure that this channel can continue to do what it does. And so without them, I would not be able to do what it is that I do. So if you enjoyed today's content and you're looking for other products, make sure to check out those guys down below. And as we close out every video, may your barbells be heavy and your coffee be black. This is David, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.